Hello, my name is Rachel Mar, Spring Board at Grown Spring, and this is Ms. Renetta Woodbury, Project Manager at Brownsville and Glory. Me and Girl Spring are so happy to have you here today. Would you please um, elaborate a little bit about yourself? Um, my name is Bernetta Woodbury. I'm a project manager for Brassman and Gory Construction Company. I've been working there for 16 years um, and I love what I do. Could you please like tell us how you got into what you do? I decided to go into construction when I was in the eighth grade. And that was because my dad, he's a blue collar worker. And so um, one of his hobbies, because he worked night shift, was um, building stuff out of wood. Um, helping uh, re renovate houses and stuff. So one Friday night, I was up with him because he used to be up at night and he decided that um, he wanted to raise my mom floor because she had asked him to. And he was like, I had extra wood downstairs, let's raise the floor. So overnight we transitioned the dining room from a flat floor to raising it about six inches. From then I realized that construction is something that I, I love to see because I can physically see something become, nothing become something. So I heard that you are a project manager. Could you know elaborate on what exactly do you do? So as a project manager, I look at it as managing a big checkbook. Um, in construction, you have a team that's called estimators, and they come up with what the cost, uh, how much it costs to actually do a project. So if the job is $1 million, it's the amount they come up with. The project manager, it's my job to make sure I have that $1 million in my checkbook and how I manage that job. So that would be making sure like the contracts are written um, to the different subcontractors, making sure everybody get paid, lining out the schedule of what takes first, what has to come um, on site, coordinate with the owner, everything that takes place to manage that job and then manage that $1 million just in my checkbook. And then complete the job and keep something for my savings for the company, which is our fee. So I also heard that you worked on a protective stadium and a hospital, the Grandview Hospital. Could you know elaborate on that and yes. tell us a little bit about um, those the two, new, the two unique things about those projects are you have a big team. The protective stadium, which is the one I finished last year, and um, for those who don't know, that's the home of the UAB Blazers. That's downtown Birmingham. That project was unique because we had a huge team out there tried to construct something right in the middle of COVID. COVID had just hit, and we had a deadline that we had to hit to try to make sure everything worked well with that project. We basically broke the job up into different aspects of it to make sure the different project managers kind of managed different parts of it. So I managed the food services, so all the concession stands if you decide to go to the stadium, the hot dogs, I was the one responsible for making sure all that take place. Grandview was unique because that building had been sitting there for about 10 years before um, a new owner came in and bought it. So basically, I worked on the part with the parking deck of building, putting the foundations and everything in with the office buildings on top of it. So those two is my biggest projects I've done, which is very dear to my heart. Do you feel that there's enough diversity and inclusion in like your field, like engineering? I'm actually glad you asked that question. Because um, as I mentioned before, I've been working in the industry for 16 years, and I have seen a drastic change in um, the diversity part of the construction industry. I could say the main part about it is a lot of people originally did not know it was a career for African Americans or it was a career for um, for women to go into those different careers. So now that we get more exposure in programs like Girl Spring to expose individuals to these different um these different careers i can see the diversity um in it the protective stadium job that we mentioned before that job also is dear to my heart because i never forget november um this was the year before we finished the project i'm walking a job and i see almost a whole floor of female electricians female plumbers and dry, and it blew my mind and and i actually called our hr department was like this is not normal and so I can see the transition of how trying to get more women into the industry. I'm in an organization called NAWIC also, National Association for Women in Construction, and we try to promote in March how we have a week of getting people to understand how you have women working in construction. And surprisingly, next year is our 25th anniversary for NAWIC across the country. So we're trying to make sure that everyone knows getting exposure out there about 
how diverse the construction industry is and how we can get people into it. Because a lot of times people just don't know that that option is out there. Based on history, with engineering, you usually think of a guy doing that type of job. You wouldn't think of a woman doing that. And doesn't matter what color you are, what gender you are, you can do anything that another person can do. So that's really dear to my heart also. Do you have any advice that you would like to give to those out there just watching um, the video? The biggest advice I would like to give, and it's not just on engineering or construction, it also has to do with just in life, period. You find something you like to do, you never have to work a day in your life. I have to say, sometimes it does get hard. You have those days like, okay, this is crazy. But those bad days are so outnumbered by the many of positive days. The stadium is a perfect example. COVID hit, so our team had to decide on how we was going to still hit a deadline. How was we going to adjust though with the city completely shutting down, the world shutting down for COVID? But being able to work through those, work through those issues and come up with, hey, I got to go to plan B. I have to go to plan C. So being able to realize that this is what I'm passionate to do. This is what I want to make sure that as my career grow, as I get older in my career, it's something I want to stick to. I run into people it's like, hey, I want to change careers because I don't like what I was doing versus at this age right now, you can decide, is this really something I want to do? So um, I highly recommend it. Me and programs like Girl Spring, um, when you get to college, if you decide to go that route, internships, co-ops, just to make sure that's something that you want to do. Because the last thing you want to do is go through school for years or some even graduate and then find out, I hate this job. Then you're miserable the rest of your life. That's more important than anything else to me is being happy and satisfied with the career you choose. That's something my mother stresses all the time. So okay. for our last question, what is the best piece of advice that you have ever received? Um, it would be that advice. Just find a career you like to do and you never have to work a day in your life. I didn't realize that it's okay to have a support group and that you're not in it alone. And I'm a person of faith, so I, I stick true to my faith and realize my word is everything. So if I say I'm gonna do something, I wanna do it because that's something that nobody can take away from you. That's the end of our interview. I hope everyone enjoyed this. Lastly, I'm Rachel Mars, springboarder at Girl Spring, and this is Ms. Renetta Woodbury, project manager at Brassville and Glory. Thank you for watching.